everyone and welcome to Stripped Music Diary. This is the third to last video of the year uh, for us and I'm here today in Sawgrass Lake Park. It's in St. Pete and it's a wildlife nature preserve and I'm going to be talking about my favorite albums of the year. So as a huge music fan, it's always really hard to choose my favorite albums of the year. So this list was no different than any other year. It's really hard for me to pick. And I am not going to do a countdown per se because it's too hard to decide which album belongs where on a list. So just talk about them in no particular order. and. Uh, first album on the list I'd have to say is up there in at least my top three albums of the year but uh, Basement came out with a follow-up to their 2014 EP um, their new album is called Promise Everything and I happened upon it because uh, Run For Cover Records sent a couple promos to my store where I work and that was one of them and it blew me away. I had never heard Basement before and I immediately downloaded and then ordered some of the vinyl in and stuff like that. So the reason I love this album so much is it really checks all of the boxes sonically for me as far as kind of that like 90s grunge post hardcore sound that I just is timeless for me. I, I love it. I've loved it for years and I think I'll always love it. So the album becomes very quiet at times and then very, very angsty other times. It, it's very self-reflective and self-loathing and it's, the album is all-encompassing and I feel like it really hits home for me and it was Definitely, definitely one of my top three for the year. So, basically, and promise several days check after it out the release. They're next up on the list. I feel like this is going to be on everybody's list this year, but David Bowie released his final album, Black Star, this year. The album, he sadly passed away. So, this album is really, really important. And the album is funny and sad and smart and just feels like a really big goodbye hug from David Bowie and it's really 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 epic record if you haven't heard it yet and to put the icing on the cake the vinyl version when held up to the sunlight it was discovered maybe two, three weeks after its release, that the black star on the cover is actually glittery when held up to the, the sunlight. So it was kind I of... I was talking in Easter my riot girl by, so check it out, David Bowie's Black Star. Next up, I want to include the second album by the California girl group Bleached. video about Bleached a little bit, I think, but they are based out of LA and I think they're really important for what's going on in music as far as music with a message, music that talks about issues. Uh, their new album, Welcome the Worms, feels much more mature than their debut release. I got a chance to see this band live. They're incredible live. I feel like the studio versions of the songs on Welcome the Worms are great, phenomenal, clean up their catchy, last year fun, release. Really worth a listen. Next up on the list is the album that I feel like everyone would guess I would name as my number one, but Beach Slang released their second full-length album, A Loud Bash of Teenage Feelings. The Things We Do to Find People Who Feel Like Us. And I didn't review this album because I felt like I couldn't do it justice. I, I love it so much and I feel like anything that 
I wanted to say about it wouldn't come out right. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I love it so, so much and the genuineness and the warmth of James Alex really comes out on this record and it's punchy and love soaked and just a, a beautiful record that any fan of beach slang would love and there's a really cool video for the single atom bomb if you haven't checked that out um, it's available and these guys are really really worth supporting they are a band that just refuses to give up and the only there's only two original members left uh, ed their bassist and james alex and uh, he's gone through a few lineup changes, some hiccups, that sort of thing. This album really just showcases that as a whole. And it's incredible and too short, <laughs> my only critique. But as far as Beach Slang releases go, they happen pretty quickly. So I feel like I don't have to wait too long before James will be doing something else incredible. So look forward to that. This next album I haven't really talked about, but and I was going this to album review is it phenomenal. I decided to wait for this video to talk about it. This would probably be my number three if I had to pick somewhere. It's definitely up there on the list, but Sub Pop's Kyle Kraft released his debut album, The Dolls of Highland, this year. phenomenal it is so 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 amazing and not what you would expect it catches you by surprise uh, Kyle Kraft was in a band called Gash Cat before he started doing solo things and just everything about him and his enigmatic personality really shines and really is apparent on this record he's from Louisiana there's a few references to Shreveport and to New Orleans that sort of thing but um, he's lived all over including under a pool table and the album was ultimately recorded in a laundry room from what I understand and the Gash Cat demo or one of the Gash Cat recordings was actually recorded on a houseboat from what I read. So really, really interesting background to Kyle Kraft. And apparently I saw in an interview that he snuck into Sub Pop in order to bring his demo tape in. And so that just whole aesthetic really, really appeals to me, but also really shows through on the record. The songs are written kind of in a storyteller fashion, not unlike the way Bob Dylan wrote songs, but I hear just a huge, huge melting pot of inspiration on this record. Anyone from David Bowie to Towns Van Sant to Mott the Hoople, there's just a lot of uh, Americana behind it as well, and the very loudly projected vocals are probably the icing on the cake for me. I, I love his vocal style and the, the lyrics a lot. The part of the music that spoke to me the most is the piano. The opening track, Eye of a Hurricane, has this kind of almost carnival piano to it, which is revisited at the end of the record, kind of closing out the record. And I just, I really love that. And it really makes you want to listen to the record from front to back. I, and I have a penchant for wanting to listen to records from front to back, so that just really, really strikes a chord in me. And I was fortunate enough to go see Kyle Kraft open for the Drive-By Truckers at Tampa Theater, which is an old, kind of supposedly haunted, beautiful theater in downtown Tampa, and put on an amazing show. And the whole thing just made me so happy, and we were waiting to talk to them after the show, uh, he and his band, and we're just the nicest, nicest people, and we ended up having some drinks next door, and it was just one of the highlights of my year. They're really, really nice people, and we need a record like that 
right now in America. So even if that's not your style of music, I highly suggest checking it out because you have to wonder, you know, if, if Sub Pop is going to sign something that different, there, there must be something special about it. So check it out. Kyle Kraft, The Dolls of Highland, one of the best records of the year. Uh, the last record that I want to say anything detailed about is a record I just discovered. <laughs> and I saw this band open for Refused earlier this year in Orlando. Uh, they're called The Coat Hangers, an all-female band. And if you haven't guessed by now, I'm really into all-female bands <laughs> this year. There are just so many good ones. So The Coat Hangers are probably my favorite girl group. Uh, they released an album this year called Nosebleed Weekend. Um, it's on Suicide Squeeze Records out of Seattle. Incredible indie label. But everything from the front to the back of this record just screams independence and femininity and just anti-male agenda. They even have a song where they use a squeaky toy. It's called Squeaky Tiki. And they switch off instruments quite a bit and they also switch off vocals too between the singer guitarist as well as the drummer so um, if you hear a little bit different vocal stylings then that's why even if you're not into riot girl or feminism it just really really grabs you and it's an amazing fifth record for this band and I'm so happy I discovered them a little late in the game but whatever. Some runner-up albums of the year. I just say runner-up because I I love them, but I love those others more. Um, Aesop Rocks, The Impossible Kid is phenomenal. Uh, the lyrics, stylings, the art direction, everything about this record is, is great. Nick from The Strokes put out a solo project under the production of Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, the group is called CRX. They put out an album called New Skin. That's really, really catchy and good. Uh, Level Up, a British band. They're signed to Sub Pop as well. Really fuzzy, lo-fi, grungy sound. Been really, really loving that record all year as well. Of course, Jimmy World's Integrity Blues. I made a video about that album. It's great. Check it out. Um, some other albums I made videos for. Mock Oranges, Put the Kid on the Sleepy Horse. Uh, Mock Orange, making a comeback. Making great emo record. Pup, The Dream is Over. Uh, Pup are not something I would love and they kind of have a young, much younger fan base than me, but they have the most energetic live show. I, I got to see them with uh, Kayatana a couple months ago, and they are incredible live. And that album is some serious, catchy, amazing pop punk. Speaking of pop punk, Modern Baseball's Holy Ghost. Uh, I did a, an album review on that as well. Definitely one of my favorites of the year as well as Deftones Gore, another one I made a video for. Um, so I feel like you guys would guess my, all of my all of my favorites of the year anyway, but there they are and really appreciate you sticking this video out. I know it's a long one and I was just really anxious to make this video before I got sick of end of the year lists and because I just ready for this year to end. <laughs> there were a lot of cool things about this year, but too many uncool things. So check out some of my other videos if you're interested. Next week I'll be doing another video. So look forward to that. And you can follow me on Instagram. Um, put the username below. And I just want to say thanks to the people who have subscribed this week. I got I think four or five new subscribers, and that's really awesome. It means a lot, and it really helps me stay motivated and find new places for me to film these videos for you guys, even when sometimes it's hard. <laughs> and subscribe to the channel if you would like to, if you haven't already. And you can also get notifications for whenever, uh, whenever I post. 
And anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite albums of the year are. Did I leave something off? Um, let me know in the comments below or on Instagram. And until next week.